Hi all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're going to be looking at the set two of the Physics C Mechanics um, questions from the 2019 exam. Um, so let's get into it. Um, as usual, I'll put the, if I have any corrections, I'll put them in the comments below. Um, but, um, and, the, and the corrected solutions will be on PDFs, uh, also in the link in the description below. So blocks of mass m and 2m are connected by a light string and placed on a frictionless inclined plane that makes an angle theta with respect to the horizontal as shown in figure 1 above. Another light string connecting the block of mass m is hanging a sphere of mass big M over a pulley of negligible mass at negligible friction. The entire system is initially at rest and in equilibrium. On the dots below that represent the block of mass little m and the sphere of mass m, draw and label the forces that act on each object. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow starting point uh, on away from the dot. Um, frictionless, so no friction. So mass M, everyone's got gravity. Uh, the normal force is always perpendicular to the ground because the ground's pushing up, only pushes up, not at an angle. Um, and then, or up from no, perpendicular to the surface. And then we have T1, the tension from this rope pulling on it, and then T2 up this way. And then M, big M, just has its force of gravity and T2 pulling up on that. And that should be it. Derive expressions for the magnitude for each of the following. If you need to draw anything other than what you've shown in part A to assist your solution, use the space below. Do not add anything to the figures in part A. The, net, the force T2 exerted on the block of mass M by the string. So uh, I actually had done this problem already, and I, I found it easier to actually group these three together. Because otherwise, I'd have to do another free body diagram on this, and um, I felt like that was unnecessary because they're not asking for T1. So if I uh, group those three things together, then I, I think about the, the force acting on the system, and I don't have to worry about T1 in that case. So if I have you know, my, my new object here. I have T2 still pulling on both of them together. I have uh, three mg going down. Then I have uh, the normal force going up like this. So I've, I've uh, you know, I, I just treated this like a system here. And so that way the free body diagram is a lot easier because then I can look at the force components. I don't actually need the normal force because there's no friction yet. Um, this is theta, so this this component here is 3 mg sine theta. So the net force on this is, um, well, in this case, T2 has to equal 3 mg sine theta because they tell us in the problem that um, the system is initially at rest and in equilibrium. So equilibrium is a key word to say that um, all the forces are zero. So this is what... 3m, let me draw a better g, sine theta. Because they wanted, uh, you could have used this side, right? Uh, T2 is equal to big mg, but they actually want it in terms of little m and theta, so not in terms of big m. And because in part two, which is what I did actually the first time when I did this, um, the, the, the mass big m, the mass big m for which the system can remain in equilibrium, so that's where I use the second equation. In the second free body diagram, T2 has to equal big MG. Okay. But we already know what T2 is equal to because that's equal to three little MG sine theta. And the Gs will just cancel. So big M will equal um, 3M sine theta. Now suppose the mass M is large enough to descend and the sphere reaches the floor before the blocks reach the pulley. Answer the following for the moment immediately after the sphere reaches the floor. Oh. I never read this before correctly. After the sphere reaches the floor. So if you have already checked my solutions on the PDF, I've already done this part wrong. The moment immediately after the sphere reaches the floor. Once the sphere reaches the floor, does the tension T1 increase, decrease to a non-zero value, decrease to zero, stay the same, decreases to zero. Um, because once the sphere is on the ground, Yeah, the normal force does all the work. The normal force will equal mg, and the tension doesn't have to do anything at this point. 
is the velocity of the block of mass m up the ramp, down the ramp, or zero? It is up the ramp still because it has an initial velocity. So even though the tension is about to be is about to stop, the acceleration is it drops to zero, not uh, down the ramp. But the velocity it will just continue on at the moment that it was right when you hit the ground. So right when it hits the ground, everything's moving up, right? This is moving up, and then it hits the ground. And the tension disappears, but it had some velocity already, so its momentum will just continue. But then uh, its acceleration will definitely be down, because once this T2 is gone, the net force will be just downward. Consider the initial setup in figure 1. And now suppose the surface of the incline is rough, and the coefficient of static friction between the blocks in the incline plane is mu s. Derive an expression for the minimum value of m that will keep the blocks from moving down the incline. So you want to keep moving from down the incline. So the key part of this question is what is the direction of friction in this case? I'm still going to use my system because the system is still useful in this case um, to describe the net force on everything. So um, the tricky part is, is the force of friction actually acts in the same direction as the tension. And that's because you're using um, friction to help you keep it from sliding down. All right. So T2 is as small as possible. That means the friction, you need friction to help you up as much as possible. So um, here, because we have friction, well, I can look at the x direction. So the net force down, net force, which again is equal zero, is 3mg um, sine theta minus T2 minus force of friction. Force of friction is mu static times the normal force. I have to look at the y direction to figure out the normal force, but the normal force is 3mg. Uh, it's equal to this component here, so it's cosine theta. So I can plug that into here, so I get 3mg sine theta minus T2 minus mu s 3mg cosine theta equals 0. And again, uh, I know T2 has to equal um, M, capital MG, so I'll put that into there. And then I can solve, um, so I have three little MG sine theta minus big MG minus mu S three MG cosine theta. The G's will all cancel. I was trying to simplify first. And then I can solve for M by moving to the other side. It's equal to three M, factor out the three M, I get sine theta minus mu s cosine theta. Okay. The string connecting block um, little m and sphere of mass m then breaks, and the blocks begin to move from rest down the incline. The lower block starts a distance d from the bottom of the incline, as shown in figure 1. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the blocks and the incline plane is mu k. Derive an expression for the speed of the blocks when the lower block reaches the bottom of the incline. Express your answers. So there's two ways you can actually do this problem. You can do kinematics, which is just sort of net force acceleration. Um, I, I'll i do it both ways so you can kind of see like how the solutions will be the same, I think. I think when I did my actual solutions, I did energy. But um, why don't I start off with doing um, the, the brute, I would say a little bit of a brute force way is to uh, simply do this. Um, force of friction, which is mu k times 3mg, by the way. And that's, uh, not, yeah, and that's force normal there. Uh, 3mg, this is, sorry, mu k times the normal force here. So the net force down the incline is going to be um, uh, 3mg sine theta, right? Just to draw the picture out again for the third time. Uh, this is theta, so sine theta is this component minus um, force of friction, which is mu k times force of friction has to equal this vector. Um, and that's um, 3mg cosine theta. And that has to equal ma, th or 3ma. So the 3ms actually all cancel, right? And so I have my acceleration. It's equal to g, it's equal to g sine theta minus mu k cosine theta. So that's my acceleration. And um, uh, what do they want? Expression for the speed of the blocks. OK, so now it's it's traveling a distance delta 
d. So I want uh, the, the kinematic equation I use is vf squared is equal to v naught squared uh, plus 2a delta x. And this is the final velocity. That's what I want. It starts at rest, so this is 0, plus 2. Instead of a, I put in this g sine theta minus mu k cosine theta, and delta x being d. So that's vf squared is equal to that. And I, then I just want the square root of that. All right, so that is that equation. Now you can also do it with energy, and it will should give you the same answer. I hope so, um, if I did it right. So um, if you want to think of it in terms of energy, you can say, well, at the at the top, right here, it has potential energy, and it's not moving, so there's no kinetic energy. And at the bottom, all that potential energy turns into some kinetic energy here, and this distance is d. And this is theta. Okay, so I'd have one half, uh, but then I also lose energy to the friction. So I have one half mv squared is equal to the mgh, and I just sort of reason out where's the where's the work done by friction going to go? Well, I'm I'm gonna this energy needs to be smaller due to friction, so I'm going to subtract the work done by friction. Okay, so let's plug in the values here. This is three m v squared equals three m g. Now the height here, you have to use a little bit of trigonometry because the height here is, uh, so the d is this distance and I know this theta, this would be d sine theta. And then the force of friction again is um, 3mg uh, times the, um, mu k times, I'm sorry, I'm doing the normal force, um, cosine theta times d. So uh, the three m's actually cancel. And so I have one half, I don't know why this is one, this is one half. One half v squared is equal to um, dg times sine theta minus mu k cosine theta, right? So I can multiply by two and then take the square root. And lo and behold, uh, we got the same answer. Good. So I'm now I feel more confident that the answer is right. Since I did it two different ways, unless I made the same mistake on the force of friction. Um, yeah. Hope you found that helpful. Um, let me know how you did. And if you have any um, suggestions or corrections or something I did wrong. Um, and I'll see you in the next problem.